Hello, hello everyone. It's Stray Faye here with another episode of Cupid Parasite. We are just starting on Gil Lovecraft's route. The third route we're doing in the game. Last episode we did a quick prologue. We were able to skip most of it. Seems like there wasn't really anything new in that prologue. Not like the second one where there's some parts where like it didn't let me skip over. Um, so we just did the choices that favored Gil. Did his date event and then, yeah, just got got uh, diverted into his route now. <laughs> and who is Gil? He is Lynette's former roommate from college, I believe. <laughs> just makes me think of the Spaceballs quote. Like, I am your father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate. What does that make us? Absolutely nothing. Alright, well, Gil is already in love with Lynette, so I have a feeling this whole route is just gonna be her, like, trying to recognize his feelings and then recognize her own. Alright, well, let's begin. Looks like we're starting with a flashback. Ugh, this room sharing thing has me on edge. I, Gil Lovecraft, entered college just a few days ago. I was so nervous while waiting for my new roommate to arrive that day. To be honest, I wanted to live alone. However, I found out that that would be impossible until after college. Unlike my hometown of Bolt Baltimore, uh, Los York was an expensive place to live. Rent was steep. I managed to get by by living paycheck to paycheck, but I finally relented and took out a classified ad for a roommate. Yep, it's, housing is expensive. Gotta hope you don't house with anyone crazy. Thanks to the ad, my new roommate is someone named Mike. He's male, but I have no clue what he's actually like. Wait. What? Well, that's not male. <laughs> their name's not Mike. Are you funny if you, like, named your character Mike? Would this be any different? Mike. He's a year younger than me, I think. I wonder if he'll be good roommates. It's the first time I'm sharing a space with someone, but since we're both guys, I think it'll go okay. So, do you know what? That doesn't turn out right. He's here! I hear the doorbell ring, so I opened the front door and I froze on the spot. There was a girl standing there. <laughs> hey, Mike! I guess the name is Mike? Question mark? Hey, you must be Gil Lovecraft! Huh? I am, but... Who are you? Hi, I'm your new roommate! I'll be living here with you from today. Wait! I thought my roommate was a guy! A guy called Mike! Oh, whoops! My aunt must have wrote that name in without thinking. Well, I guess I'm Mike then. Nice to meet you! Uh, uh, you're a... My roommate is a girl? Oh no, the cooties. A few days after Parasite 5 quit their Cupid Corporation membership. Alright, this is like going back to the future. Going, going based off the end of the prologue. I reread Gil's message. Hmm. I'm <laughs> text from Gil. I'm sorry I can't let go of these feelings. I tried to move on and find new love, but I can't just let go of her. That's why I'll quit this whole matchmaking service. I'm no longer running away from my broken heart. I'm chasing her for real. And here I was going to help him find another chance at love. I also received word from Owen that Monsieur Essay will be suspending any and all matchmaking activities as well. Now the Parasite 5 are officially the Parasite Zero. I wonder if Gil is alright. Technically, you're not supposed to contact people who are no longer members. Still, Gil is a personal friend. Remember or not, I think it's okay to check up on a friend. Plus, I'm Cupid. As a god, I have to keep an eye out on humanity's romantic fate. Yeah, just like adjusting the mic. 
After mulling things over, I decided to give Gil a call. Nope. One, one, two, three, five, one, two, three. Oh, where's the four? Is, is four unlucky? Sounds like, uh, sounds like death. Huh, Lynette? I didn't expect you to call. What's up? I'm just like reading the apps on there. Hang on, body time? <laughs> it's FaceTime. Can you not put FaceTime on the screen? Oh, he picked up. I feel like body time. <laughs> I feel like that, that would be a lewd app. I was, I was just worried about you, so I thought I'd give you a call. So, how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine. Yourself? Oh, I'm fine, but... Gil, are you really going to quit the matchmaking service? Yes. I already made up my mind. I'm sorry, though. I know you did a lot for me. It's... It's alright. Gil's determined voice was clear, even through the phone speaker. I can tell he's absolutely serious. I came to this decision after everything that's happened. I don't want to lie to myself about my feelings anymore. None of the members could sway my heart. I thought it would be different if I met someone new face to face, but... It wasn't. If I just kept ignoring my true feelings, it would cause trouble in the end. Maybe hurt the other person. That's why I wanted to improve myself. I wanted to become the kind of man who can confess their true feelings. Oh, Gil. Didn't realize he was that serious about Clarice. Eh, <laughs> wrong. Alright, okay. I've got your back, Gil. Oh, the thanks. <laughs> I do have one question. Uh, what kind of man do you find attractive? Oh, me? Well... My type of man? I've... Never really thought about that. Picturing Gil. Well, oh. already got. She's already caught the feelings. I flashed back to when Gil was writing the blog post for the Parasite House. Come to think of it, Gil was just as concentrated when writing. Gil looked quite handsome back then. Honestly, he lit up when he was writing. Someone. Someone who's chasing their dreams. Their dreams? Yeah. Whenever I see someone trying their best to make their dreams come true, it's inspiring. I would like to be with someone who has conviction. Someone who's got goals. Someone who's chasing after their dreams. As soon as I said that, I realized my lack of professionalism. Instead, I spoke too honestly. Come to think of it, Clarissa has always said that she prefers men that she can be herself with. But if she won't reciprocate Gil's feelings, maybe throwing him a curveball could shake things up in a good way. Gil wants to win Claris over, I think it would be best to showcase his strength. And especially since he's been rejected before. It should be fine, right? I don't think I'm being too pushy. In the moment, I was nervous, but I heard Gil mummering, mum, bleh, mummering under his breath. A dream? A goal? Do I have conviction? I suppose maybe I should just be myself. Gil, isn't there something else you want, you want for yourself? Something for myself? Come to think of it, I've never given that much thought. I chose my current job so I would have plenty of time for the girl of my dreams. Speaking of which, Gil said something like that before during Parasite House. Uh, being a freelance editor gives you flexible work hours, but I don't have anyone to dedicate my free time to. Did he just become an editor? Does he want to do something else? Did he just become an editor just because he thought like, oh, I'll, I'll be able to, I'll be able to be with Lynette if I work from home? Something I want to do. Gil got silent, caught up in his thoughts. He then muttered something. 
Actually, initially I wanted to write articles for Cartcraft Road. Cartcraft Road? Is that like... Is, is that like a real life magazine or is it like change up the name of it? It's a car enthusiast magazine. I used to love reading it when I was a kid. I would get a copy every month from the bookstore. He, he did go a little crazy seeing a, a what was it, Sutroid or something on the date. He, he's a car person. He's just, just hiding it, I guess. Because I like to write, it was a childhood dream of mine to write specifically for Carcraft Road. But then life happened once I left home. I started part-time at the theater and then I thought it wouldn't be bad trying to work for a movie magazine. The longer I worked there, my desire to write elsewhere faded. But I think I want to challenge myself to write for that magazine again. Wow, you've got a lot of passion. Really? You think so? Of course. I remember how you wrote at Parasite House. I think it's nice to be able to have that kind of passion. Your writing is so beautiful, Gil. It's only natural that I want to support your dream. I, uh, I see. Honestly, I feel motivated to hearing you say that. Thank you. I'm glad that you reached out. It feels good to hear your thoughts. No problem. I'll cheer, I'll cheer you and your dream on, Gil. Reach out anytime. I guess I think they misspelled Gil. G the third. Thanks. I'll call you again sometime soon. Yeah, see you later. I hung up the phone and took a breather. I wonder if this is a good idea or not. I only voiced my own thoughts, but my intention was to encourage his love of Claris. But it's that felt more like a heart to heart there. And, uh, but if someone is stressed out constantly, then it's not real love. I think it would be best to find someone who gets Gil. You mentioned a car magazine. I do remember Gil getting excited about cars. During our practice date, Gil got really energetic when he saw a certain rare car. He tried to deny his enthusiasm back then. It's hard to understand why he did that. Maybe he was like trying to hide it just so... He looked a certain way to you. I just hope Gil can find something that he can be passionate about. That's all I could think about in the moment. Oh, Gil's- no, oh, it's Gil's. That's after the phone call. He's just out on the street. That shocked me! I looked at the black screen of my smartphone with my hand over my heart. I didn't think she would call me. My heart is still racing. In the back of my mind, I can hear her voice as clear as a bell. I'm so in love with her. These feelings refuse to fade away. Even while we were living separate lives, my feelings lingered. They ignited when I saw her again and have grown stronger since. I thought about the possibility of her reciprocating my feelings. I haven't kept my life open for that, but it's been two years. Oh man, Gil. Two years waiting for a girl you didn't even contact. I always worry. <laughs> I always worried that if I used my spare time for myself, I wouldn't have any left for the person I love. But if that's her advice, then maybe, maybe it's okay for me to chase my dreams. Yeah, Gil, become your own person. When we were still students, I remember her saying she finds someone she can be with forever to be the most attractive. Maybe her taste changed after she started working. No, oh, no, it's all Lynette's fault. He's like this. After all, people grow and change. That's natural. Maybe it's time for me to change as well. But one thing will never change. Of course, that's my feeling for her. My heart was shattered two years ago. It's been so long since I fell in love with her. Lynette, I don't even remember when it was that I started falling for you. First you came to my home, then we suddenly became roommates. Back then, all I wanted to do was protect you.
a little over six years ago. A long time ago. Oh! <laughs> I guess this is my question mark. Oh, so this is the place. It's perfect! She peered into the room, curious about everything. I idly stood by, unable to stop her. I didn't think I'd be living with a girl! Um, sorry, but can I ask your name? Oh yeah, I'm Cupid. Uh, Cupid? Is that your nickname? Oh right, humans have first and last names, right? Um... My name is Lynette Mir. Lynette Mir? Wow, you have the same name as the female lead from that drama show that aired five years ago. I think the title was Lynette Mir and the Six Princes of Los York. <laughs> trying to think if that's an actual movie or like some play on like Snow White or something, I don't know. <laughs> oh, really? What a coincidence. So I'd appreciate it if you just like call me Lynette. Understood. Are you sure you want to stay here? It'll just be the two of us. Of course. Why? Are you having regrets? Well, because you're a girl, you might not like living with a bachelor. That's not true. It's my dream to live in a place like this. Her eyes are sparkling as she looked around the room. It was as if everything was new to her. She has like no sense of caution. <laughs> a girl living with a, with a dude? What, what if something happened? That innocent, gleeful smile made my heart skip a beat. How cute! She's so happy to be in a home like this. I wonder what her life was before now. Maybe she lived in a foreign country? Right as I was pondering that, she picked up something with a curious look on her face. Wow! What's this? Some kind of fabric lunch mat? <laughs> Oh my god, that's my underwear! <laughs> I yanked my underwear out of her hand and jammed them into my pocket. That was a shock. She's never seen boxer briefs before. Maybe she's some sheltered high-class girl who's never been on her own? She didn't say that her aunt wrote, her, wrote the name Mike, not her. She also mentioned that she wanted to live somewhere like this. Maybe she's a girl on the run from her home situation. In that case, I should do my best to care for her. Hey, uh, let me take you to your room. I'll carry your things for you. Thanks, um... Can I call you Gil? Of course! Haha, <laughs> wow! It's the first time I've been on a first-name basis with someone. Nice to meet you, Gil. It's the first time she used someone's first name? Wow, she must have really lived a sheltered life. I suddenly felt responsible for her. My palms start to sweat as nerves settle in. Maybe it was luck. Maybe it was fate. But I'm glad she chose my place. If she had ended up somewhere else, that would have been bad. This strange sense of duty filled my heart. She was my charge. I've had to take care of her the best I could. Oh, no. <laughs> this is like a guy's best dream. Having, having like a super naive girl that you can just manipulate like how she views you. It's like kind of, kind of groomer behavior, but we're just gonna pretend Gil is a good guy. He, he's trying to take care of her like a parent. And that's what kickstarted our life together. This as I thought. She was a privileged rich girl who had no common sense. Ah! Oops. Are you okay? You're not hurt, are you? Uh, I'm fine. I just didn't know that this was so slippery. She held a sponge covered with soapy bubbles in her hands. At a glance, it looked like she broke some dishes while cleaning. Ugh. I'm so glad you're not hurt. I'll clean up everything and 
Hey, uh, didn't I tell you that I'd handle all the housework? I'm sorry. I feel bad for making you do everything. It's just... I saw this in a movie. It, it looks so easy. In a movie, huh? In other words, she's only seen it, but hasn't actually experienced it for herself. This feels like a scene straight out of Sh Shanison Holiday. Janice and Holiday was a movie about a princess who escaped her palace and learns about the other side from a journalist. Meaning I'm just like that journalist. It's up to me to show her the world. I wrap up the dish yards with newspaper and clean up the sinks. Once I've finished, I turn to her. I'll show you how to wash dishes. For starters, you'll need a small amount of soap on the sponge. A little goes a long way. I taught her everything that there is to know about keeping house. She seemed, to, she seemed to have a severe lack of common know-how. Can't imagine how she lived before now. Gil, what's this? That's an iron. Use it to get wrinkles and marks out of your clothes. And this? That's laundry detergent. Actually, we need more. Would you like to come shopping with me? Yes, please. So adorable. Couldn't help but feel joy at her innocent, sweet smile. Oh gosh, Gil is just like slowly, just like he seems happy, but man, like having someone absolutely dependent on him. In a way, she's like a child. She latches on to everything I teach her. I feel like it's my duty to help her become a proper adult. It's a big responsibility. Anyway, I have to teach her some common sense until she enters college. Actually, she said that she's here to attend Los York Uni, just like me. She's already passed the entrance, e entrance exams. All that's left is to instill some common sense in her, and then she'll be ready. Still, she's so adorable. She's just like a baby duckling, always following me around. She's so loyal. No matter where I go, she always tags along and watches every moment I make. This girl needs me. I have to protect her with all my heart. <laughs> this is his room. Wait, this is like this is Claire's room, right? There's no drawing on the wardrobes. Pictures of cars. Days pass by, then one day. I was reading a movie magazine in my room. I had started working at the local movie theater ever since I came to Los York. Naturally, I was interested in films now. Initially, I almost wa I only watched the Transfor Car series, but once I started watching other movies, they were just as interesting too. The theater owner is a good person. Maybe it would be a good place for her to get some experience, too. She said she was looking for a part-time work. I'm a bit worried about her abilities, but I could still look after her on the job. She's gonna do her work for her as well. Maybe I should bring it up. I get up from my bed and hear a scream from the living room. Ah! Oh no! What do I do? Gil, help! Lynette! I throw open the door and run to her. What the heck? Without warning, I slipped and fell. Oh no, Gil! She tried to run to rescue me, but instead slipped and fell on top of me. It was then that I noticed the entire room was covered in big soapy bubbles. That, that no. Did she overfill the, the washing machine? What the? What happened here? Um, I was trying to do the laundry and just like, just like you taught me, but then the bubbles kept coming and coming and coming. <laughs> bubbles? How much detergent did you put in? Huh? I put in lots, just like you told me. Lots? I meant just one cup. One cup! Did you put the entire container in? Uh, I... She looked pale as a ghost with her hand held over her mouth. 
So, not just a lot. <laughs> like a, it's like a scene out of a rom-com. We stared at each other before a laughter explodes from us. <laughs> oh my god. A little understanding makes all the difference. I'm so sorry. It's alright, I should have made sure you clearly understood. We grinned at each other. Gently, I brushed her cheek without realizing my hand was covered in bubbles. Oh, I got bubbles on your face. Huh? She raised her hand to her cheek, which only spread the bubbles around more. <laughs> There's even more now. Oh, please don't laugh. This is embarrassing. It looks like a mustache. <laughs> well, if you're gonna tease me, then I'll give you one to match, Gil. There. Hey! Something sweet filled my nose as her fingers brushed over my cheek. Now we match. So adorable. My heart races as she runs her fingers and the bubbles over my cheek. Oh, this isn't good. We're roommates. Plus, she's completely relying on me for everything. I can't let my feelings get tangled up in our relationship. Good on him for, like, keeping some restraint. <laughs> I picked up a bunch of bubbles and threw them into the air. Now you've done it. Time to see who can get even bubblier. Eek! Oh, now you've done it, Gil. She scooped up a mound of bubbles and threw them. Our impromptu soap suds fight lasted about 15 minutes. By the end, we were covered in bubbles. Our laughter never ended. Y'all, back to the depressing future. I really enjoyed those days. I continued to reminisce as I walked home. That place had two bathrooms, so we had our own space to bathe in. I still remember how cute she looked fresh out of the bath. I even think I vaguely realized my feelings for her that moment on. But I did try to resist them. I remember teaching her how to take a bath that night as well. It was difficult because it only made me desire her more. Oh god, wait! <laughs> you have to teach her how to take a bath? <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Instead of making an in inappropriate move, I watched a horror movie to calm myself down. <laughs> uh. Back then, the peaceful life we had was more important than my feelings. That's why I pushed aside my own feelings and continued to look after her. Even still, I loved her dearly. I loved living with her. She was all I could think of. I'd forgotten my reasons for coming to Los York or what I wanted to do in the first place. She became the center of my world. I mean, I guess it is kind of like... Lynette and Minerva's fault for just like, There you go! Take care of this thing! <laughs> That's never been on Earth before. But then, she rejected me. Rather, she never noticed my feelings. And here I am now, still craving a love that will never happen. I started to feel a deep sense of despair. Which is why I looked to matchmaking. Then I met her again. This must be fate. She's the only woman for me. That's why I want to become the kind of man that she'll pay attention to. Watch out, Lynette. I'm gonna win your heart. Oh, what's this? Next chapter. <laughs> one step forward, two steps back. This will do one more chapter. Oh, we're back in Celestia. Why is... What? Why is feet? <laughs> it's kind of weird to see feet in, like, an Otome game, because usually the portraits are just, like, waist up. Just, like, facial profiles. Oh, old man here. Humph! Humph! I can't believe my daughter left home without telling anyone. She's renegating. <laughs> She's rene reneging? Rene renegating? I don't think I'm saying that right. On her duties, 
This is simply unforgivable. Oh, Mars. Look at that 20 meter tall body. I could... I could climb you like a tree, you war god, you. <laughs> that plan ended an absolute failure. Lo, how can we get her back? Oh, Mars. She can't treat you like I do, nor can she kiss you as I can. Won't you look upon me? Oh, Venus. I apologize. I was so enraged that I forgot my size. <laughs> Maybe she likes it big, I don't know. Oh, Mars. I love it when you get so big. You're, you're most handsome at this size. I can't get enough of it. Lo. Venus, my beautiful love, you're my goddess of beauty. But that Cupid, <laughs> why don't you return home to Celestia? She's been in the human realm for six years now. I'm worried that she'll get some strange ideas inside that head of hers. <laughs> it's only been six years, it's probably, it's probably a short time for gods, right? Uh, a few days after checking in on Gil. I was window shopping with Claire's for the first time in a while. Hmm, I just love having a girl's day out. Nothing beats gals being pals. Come to think of it, it's been a while since we've had the same day off. Yeah, plus you've been so busy recently. Don't you know how lonely I was? <laughs> I said I was sorry. Claris puffed up her cheeks like a chipmunk, which made me laugh. I wasn't able to have any time to myself because I was so busy with Parasite House. But with Parasite 5 quitting, life returned to normal. That meant I could spend more time with Claris. Oh, and Chi. Chi must have run away because of the Parasite House situation. That's the only reasonable explanation. So, will you finally give me the juicy details about Parasite House? Huh? I've got nothing else for you besides what I already told you over our meal. You had five hands. I'm single available men living in the same house as you. There's no way you didn't get up to something. Players, it's the Parasite 5 we're talking about. Pipe made. Still, there is there any man alive who wouldn't make at least some kind of move in that situation? I mean, <laughs> but didn't like Alan do something? <laughs> Claire is, I think that's stereotyping all men. Then again, Claire is much more experienced with men than I am. I was thinking about that when suddenly Claire is looked up. Hey, that shop's really pushing its designs these days. Can we check it out? Huh? Oh, sure, but isn't that a men's boutique? Well, the guy I've got my eye on has an upcoming birthday. Claris playfully winks at me and briskly walks towards the shop. Though she's interested in buying her guy a present here. Wow. Not only is Claris beautiful, she's also so considerate. Plus, she has her fine taste. What an amazing woman! I frequently have members ask for advice about gift giving and presents. Typically, I recommend things that are easy to buy and even easier to gift. After all, reducing risk is important as a matchmaker. That's why I avoid boutiques like this. Preference always plays a huge role when it comes to fashion and clothes. Then again, maybe it would be good for me to learn a bit more about men's fashion. It might help me as an advisor. Claris would be the perfect teacher, so I chased after her as quickly as possible. You're in Ryuki's shop. Wow. I walked inside the store and couldn't hide my awe. All around were vivid colors and stylish, uniquely cut suits. There were stunning patterns that immediately caught my eye. Hmm... I believe this is known as Jap Japanesism. <laughs> Japanese me? 
a style that has a kind of orientalism feel to it. I like that. It's not Jap Japaneseism, nor is it oriental orientalism. If that's what you think when you see my products, you must not be right in the head. Ryuki, I heard a familiar, irritated voice suddenly. It's none other than the glamour parasite, Ryuki. So I want, dude, what's your problem? How have you heard of customer service? Why are you being so mean? <laughs> Oh wow, Ryuki-kun! I was so worried about you. You quit so suddenly. How have you been? I'm fine. Same as always, I suppose. Oh, well anyway, what are you doing here? Did you not see the sign outside? The one that says Ryuki? Huh? I ran back outside the shop and looked up. Sure enough, there was an Ryuki sign. Come to think of it, there are signs inside too. Meaning this is Ryuki's shop. Seems like we had unknowingly entered Ryuki's territory. Claris wasn't looking too happy. It actually looked pretty angry. Thankfully, an employee came from the back to help her. Uh, are you looking for a gift for a special someone? This is our most popular item this season. Really now? The designer must have a crappy personality, but hey, at least he makes a good product. Also, did the, I, I haven't seen like Clarice's paints. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like a little slit down there. Risque girl. C Clarice, you can't just give backhanded compliments like that. At least try to be a little polite. Are you gonna look around? I sense Ryuki looking at me. Uh... For some reason that says to create a save file, which does seem very early in the route, but... I guess you have to do a lot of mistakes <laughs> to get a different ending. Alright. Uh, let's pick the correct choice. Maybe I should, as a reference. Oh, me? Well, maybe I will so I can have a few references. Then again, I don't have anyone to shop for, though. I don't have any men in my life to give a gift to. But if I use my imagination, maybe that'll help me out here. The person I'm closest to is Gil. I felt like he was a good model to use for this. Hearts. Ah, uh, so you do have some interest. But still no taste, I see. Jeez, I'm sorry. <laughs> he cut to the quick, as usual. Guess some things won't change, even though he's no longer a Cupid Court member. Still, we're engaging in a conversation, which is more than I could say before when he wouldn't talk to anyone beneath him. In spring in the face, at least. Either his values have changed, or I've moved up in terms of my facial grade. <laughs> While chatting with Ryuki, another customer walked into the store. Oh, you. Oh my, what a lovely little boutique. Uh-oh. That's a member of ours. That's Catherine Spade, a Cupid Court member who previously asked me to be her advisor. Ah, you're my personal Cupid from the other day, aren't you? What a marvelous coincidence. I think this is the voice I used for her. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, oh, hello there. Thank you so much for your patronage. Cupid Corporation thanks you. Oh, come on now. No need to act so formal. You're not on the clock right now, are you? I was just on my way to sign up for a matchmaking party when I happened to notice this darling store. Catherine kept her sunglasses on despite being indoors. She looked around the shop and picked up a piece of jewelry. Oh, this bracelet is precious. I think I'll take it. That's a choker. If you can't tell the difference, you need to get your eyes checked. Also, it's for men. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kisain, please allow me to assist her. An employee shuffles to the clearly irritated Ryuki to the back of the house and goes to attend Catherine's needs. 
technically Ryuki is still a minor, but he's still- I thought he was 19. Wait. <laughs> but he still managed to open up a store and hire staff. That's pretty amazing. Overall, I was pretty impressed. I turned to look at Catherine, who was looking back at me with a puzzled expression. Hmm? And who is this? Upon saying that, she looked towards Claris. Somehow I thought I caught a glint of her eyes from behind those sunglasses. Oh, you mean her? This is my friend. Oh, yes, uh, I see. What? <laughs> What's up with the boomer? She's glaring at me. The boomer? Claris, hush! Miss Catherine is a valued Cupid Court member! Ugh, she's one of ours? Ours? Didn't know we had cougars on the member list. <laughs> Jesus Christ! She's not. Claris isn't a. She's not an advisor, right? I think she's like. The tech person, or like the, the computer person? Miss Catherine said she was on a way to a matchmaking party. <clears throat> uh huh. <clears throat> oh. Sorry, Dick. Uh huh, yeah. I'm out. It's a bit too crowded in here. Huh? Claris returns Catherine's glare, then she seizes my hand and pulls me outside. What a shock! I never seen Claris act like that with someone. Hmm. Claris is friendly, but she's blunt and doesn't hold back. It's the first time I've seen her actively avoid someone. That's kind of suspicious, because we know who Catherine is. I'm beat. I'm hungry, too. How about we go grab a bite to eat? I don't mind, but what about your shopping? Oh, I'm done. Claris is holding a stylish paper bag with the Yaryuki logo on it. When did you... How did you... Well, anyway, what did you buy? I went classic and simple, so I bought a necktie. After all, we're not that close yet. You didn't buy, any, <laughs> buy any underwear for him? A necktie? I wonder what it looks like. I wish I could have seen what she picked. Back in college, Claris helped me pick... Without help me with picking out my outfits. While Gil might have raised me and helped me understand the human realm, Clarice was the one who taught me about fashion. I must have looked a little anxious because Clarice giggled. I can see the gears in your brain turning. Someone wants to know what I bought, huh? Well, yeah, because you've never bought a gift for a man before. Huh? Never? Never ever! Not even once! Oh, really? Hey, while you're at it, how about you go get a gift for Gil? Gil? Why Gil? Is it, his, is it his birthday or something special? Even though I thought of Gil as my model, I've never considered giving him a personal gift. Hmm. Actually, I thought you two would be a match made in heaven. Come to think of it, Claris did say that Gil and I would be a good couple a lot of times back in university, but she's trying to, like, matchmake them. <laughs> However, every time she said that, I wanted to wish Gil even more luck with Claris. I have to ask again, but... Are you sure you feel nothing for Gil? Nothing at all? Duh, of course! It's Gil! Yet Claris is the one Gil has feelings for my duty to support his love. I should be the one asking you that, Cla <laughs> Claris. Don't you have any feelings for Gil? Well, he's pretty nice to have around, but there's like a ton of boys like that. As an individual specimen, I, I don't hate him. As a specimen? You don't think of him as more than a nice specimen? <laughs> Haven't you considered dating him? Ugh, no way. Gil lays it on too thick. He's not worth it. Even if by chance we started dating, he'd pamper me to death. Really? That much? Wait a minute. Don't tell me that you mistakenly think Gil likes me. What do you mean mistakenly? 
That's just what it is. Gil likes you. I finally said what I've been thinking all along. In my heart, I apologize for revealing Gil's secret. Yet Clara's relieved expression soothed me. Ah, uh, Gil likes me? Did you hit your head? <laughs> She's finally gonna lay it out. You're the one Gil has feelings for, not you, not me. Gil was always and still is in love with you. Yo! What? <laughs> what? No way! That's absolutely, positively, impossibly impossible! No way! Impossible? Ha! <laughs> okay, then let's make a bet. If I'm wrong, I'll do all the chores for a month. If you're wrong, chores for you. For a month? Well, if you're so worried, then don't take the bet. I don't mind doing housework anyway. In fact, I like it. Uh, well... Well, there's no risk. After all, Gil is in love with Clarice. I think. But, what if Clarice is right? What if Gil likes me or even loves me instead? Suddenly, I'm not feeling so confident anymore. <laughs> Are the gears, gears turning? Doubt? Maybe? Back in university, Gil always looked so shy around Claris at breakfast. Then there was the times he said he didn't want Claris at home at want Claris home at night. Maybe maybe he just wanted her out of the picture, so because it was just like you and him for a while, right? Those lovelorn expressions he made were definitely those of someone deeply in love. Claris must just be confused. I hope. Gil's never said that he likes me to my face. Plus, if he's lovelorn, that means he's been rejected by his love. That can't possibly be me, because I've never rejected him. Gil's never admitted any feelings for me. He probably did, and it just went whoosh over her head. Fine, okay, let's make a bet. I bet you I won't lose, Claris. So confident, <laughs> yet so hopeless. Anyway, enough about Gil. Let's go eat. I'm starving. Claris winks at me and off we go. Arm in arm. I can smell her perfume. Maybe it's that luxury brand Moon Roland that, from even from a woman's perspective, Claris is lovely. <laughs> totally want a Claris route. Come on, where's the Claris route? I really, truly think Gil has feelings for her. I continue to assure myself of that while Clarice and I enjoy our girls' day out. <clears throat> Clear my throat. I need to drink more water. I, the seal on my water bottle is broken, so like every time I take a drink, it's just like lit all over me. Ugh, so tired. Back to Gil. What's he doing in the park? One morning. I was sitting alone on the bench in Los York Park. I dreamed about Lynette this morning. I'm embarrassed to say it. It was somewhat lewd, too. Uh-oh, what? <laughs> I woke up and tried to clear my head of those kinds of desires. I decided the best solution was to go run in Los York Park. Gotta run off that boner, dude. I usually don't get much exercise, so I slowed down from a run to a brisk walk. Still, I did a few laps until I felt calm. I haven't had that kind of dream in a while. Maybe it's because I heard her voice recently. Even over the phone, her soft, whispering voice was enough to make my heart race. That must be what triggered the dream. I'm better than when we lived together. Back then, I had those kinds of dreams a lot more often. Oh god, Lynette, you were in danger. <laughs> it was on the same night Claris became our new roommate. For some reason, I always had a dream about kissing Lynette whenever Clarice was in for the night. Hmm. Oh, that's not true. I've dreamed about doing much more than kissing, even back then. Ugh! That day, I dreamed about being intimate with her and jolted awake while screaming. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! This can't be happening! I had this really raw feeling that we've gone all the way together. What? 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 
When I think about that day, the memory is still so fresh. Her lovely voice, her smooth skin, my hand and her hair. Oh god, he's having wet dreams. I enjoyed her body so much in my dream. Naturally, I couldn't remain calm. Why do I keep having these dreams back to back again and again? Gil? Gil, are you okay? I heard her knock on the door right before she peeks into the room. I quickly covered myself up so she didn't see anything bad. Uh-oh. Got a guy to hide the tent. Uh, I'm okay! Peachy Keen! There, there was just... just a bug! Oh, a bug? Where? Uh, I squashed it already, so it's gone. I'm fine. Actually, I want to get ready, so uh, can you leave? Oh, sorry. Well, Clara said she was hungry, so I was thinking about getting breakfast together. Wait, I'll make breakfast. Just hold on and let me get ready. Oh, okay. He left then, allowing me a moment to catch my breath and give a sigh of relief. Because of that particular dream, it was hard for me to stop being so excited. After that, I calmed down. Well, for now. I get out of bed and quickly change out of my pajamas. Why did I start having these dreams? Seems like they happen more often when Claris is here than not. Hmm. Okay, some something's up with Claris. <laughs> then again, Claris does her own thing most of the time, so she's often out at n out all night. I don't know, maybe like she's spraying some like pheromones everywhere. Usually, I would be able to have time to myself with her, but everything's so different when Claris is around. She and Claris are very friendly with another. In fact, they often go into the room for girl talk. Maybe these dreams are happening because I'm lonely. Maybe I'm sexually frustrated because I keep having to share her. But the reality is, we're not even dating yet. Still, I thought that my loneliness was a possibility. I enjoyed our life together, so seeing her go away made me feel restless. I felt lonely now that there's distance between us. Even now, she offered to make breakfast all on her own. Back when it was just the two of us, she would wait to be fed like an innocent baby bird. Claris changed everything. Maybe that's why I felt lonely. Maybe that's what triggered those kinds of dreams. Ugh. I'm being so immature. I should be happy that she's more independent now. Claris is her old college friend. When Claris got wind of our rooming situation, she came to her rescue since I'm a man. <laughs> He's like, good job, Claris. It's not letting Lynette just be for the wolves. Then again, I'm happy she made a friend. In a way, it was a relief not to just be the only person around her, but still. I didn't think I'd become so aware of my desires right when the three of us started living together. I had always had an inkling that these lingering, long-lasting feelings existed. Guess they're really the real deal. I think that I really... I love Lynette. A gal is a food radiant. Oh, sorry. I'm coming. I slapped myself in the face to clear out the last remnants of my dreams. With these two girls, I have to play the role of Gil Lovecraft, the totally safe roommate and friend. It was hard to act normal after experiencing that dream. Breakfast with Clarice was horrifically awkward. No. Uh, back to Lynette? It's pink. On that day, I was heading home via the subway. I vaguely remember my conversation with Clarice. You're the one Kel has feelings for. Yo, not me. Gil was always and still is in love with yo. Yo. I'm the one that Gil has feelings for? I never even ever considered Gil having feelings for me. I truly thought that it was impossible. As the real deal Cupid, I tend to habitually observe people to see who they're in love with. I always noticed how Gil blushed and became flustered whenever he was eating breakfast with Claris. 
He was always so much more relaxed around me. He was never excited. That's why I think Clarice is wrong. I think he was just trying to hold it together. <laughs> Plus, I didn't notice anything when we met again as an advisor and parasite at Cupid Corp. That, really? That, that longing look with that handhold? <laughs> but I can't believe how much more beautiful you've become. So, uh, are you dating anyone right now? That's, that, that's kind of on the nose there. <laughs> It's like so obvious. Dating? No, not at the moment. Oh, really? How about you, Gil? Are you... Oh, sorry, dumb question. That's why you're here after all. Anyway, let's start the official interview. Huh? Interview? Well, that is why you came to us, right? To find someone to marry. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I guess so. But I kind of forgot about all that once I saw you again. Wait a second. <laughs> Looking back, Gil was holding my hand when we reunited. Every time I held those seminars, he would be there, watching me with bright, twinkling eyes. Back then, I thought he was really focused on getting a match. But if Clarice is right, then Gil was focused elsewhere. Then, on our practice date, Gil still doted on me and did everything. If that's the case, then I'm the reason he became the lovelorn parasite. Something isn't adding up here. True, Gil often looked after me, but he did the same for everyone in the parasite house. Think he just got used to that? That's just Gil's nature. It's hard to believe that I was special in any particular way. That practice date, that seems so distant now. After our date, I tried to help Gil understand what he needed to be fixed, but ultimately he quit looking for new love. Gil seemed to have a positive outlook from our call the other day. He seemed to have a renewed drive and a lot more conviction. He said he wanted to write for a car magazine called Carcraft Road. I didn't expect Gail to have such a thing for cars. Then again, back when we were roomies, he did have a lot of plastic models in his bedroom. He always cared for them so thoughtfully and dusted them with care. Yet you know, when I asked if he liked cars, he denied it. By the time I realized his bluff, Gil had gotten rid of all of his models. Until now, I had forgotten about that. Uh, because I like to write, it was a childhood dream of mine to write specifically for Carcraft Road. But then life happened once I left home. Life happened. I'm not sure what he's referring to, but I do know that he likes cars. He's gonna chase after his dreams. If Gil wants to chase his dreams, then I'm happy for him as a friend. But I'm still avoiding his potential feelings for me. I can't help but think about that after Clarice's comments. Maybe I should meet up with Gil soon. Then I can find out the truth about Gil and if he has any feelings for me. That's better than just pondering about things. The train arrives at my station. As I made my way home, I thought about what kind of message to send to Gil. Alright, next chapter. Cross your fingers for a letter. Alright, this is a good stopping point. I've been going for an hour. I guess we're gonna meet up with Gil. Gotta, gotta hash out these feelings. Gotta lay it all bare. Hopefully nothing gets in the way of Gil's feelings. He's a, he always seems to be the catalyst for, like, the other dudes to make a move, but... Now there's, there's no other dudes in the way. Alright, saved. Okie doke. Well, anywho, need to rest my voice for a bit. I hope you guys are having a fun time with this. And I'll see you in the next episode. Uh, bye bye.